This is an amazing transition by Bentike from his travel theme All Cruise. And it's great news for Bentike's fan because I'm gonna break down this window transition in Premiere Pro. To make this transition, I'm gonna use two video clips. In the first one, you can see a train in a metro station. You can find this kind of footage on websites like Pixels, Pixabay, VDZ, and similar sites. Now let's move on to the second clip. This is basically a picture of a train window that I have animated for this tutorial because sometimes it's hard to find the exact footage I need online. Just like earlier, when I shared how I created fake drone footage for the Sam called the Luma fade transition. In this footage, we need to draw marks around the train window to get the masking transition. First, let's create a duplicate copy of this footage by holding down the Alt key and dragging the video to the layer underneath. Now you might wonder why you duplicate this video. We do this to make the masking process easier. Make sure the upper layer video is selected, then move the time indicator to the last frame of the video. Next, go to the effect controls tab on the top left side. In the effect controls, you will see the opacity section and just below that is the pen tool. Select the pen tool to draw marks on the footage. Masking is always a time consuming task, so take your time and carefully draw the marks around the train window. Once the masking is done, you'll notice that we have drawn the marks on the last frame of the video. So we need to create a keyframe at the last frame by clicking on the stopwatch icon next to the max path. If you can't see the masking points around the window, it's because max on is not selected. Just click on max on to enable the masking points. Now we need to animate this max because the video involves movement and this window is constantly changing position. To make this process easier, we can use the track backward and track forward icons. Since the time indicator is at the last frame, click on the track backward icon to start max animation tracking process. Once the tracking is complete, you'll see a lot of keyframes created for every frame where there are changes. If I move the time indicator, you can see how Prima Pro tracks the window. It does a good job at the initial stage where the movement is straight forward. But when the window starts zooming in, Prima Pro struggles to keep up. This is because Prima Pro is not specialized for tracking like After Effects and has some limitations. Now we need to manually complete the rest of the max animation. To do this, we first need to delay some of the keyframes where Prima Pro couldn't properly animate the max. First make sure the cursor is over the effect control step and then hit the tilde key which is located just below the escape key to maximize the tap. Then click and drag to select the keyframes that need to be deleted. Finally hit the delete key on the keyboard to remove the selected keyframes. If you prefer you can delete them one by one. Once you are done hit the tilde key again to restore the effect controls panel to its original size. Now let's start with the manual tracking. Move the time indicator a few frames to the left and adjust the masking points as needed to follow the intro. Continue this manual tracking process until the end. I know it's a time consuming task and can sometimes feel boring, but try to enjoy it. It can actually enhance your passion for editing, which is important. If you need to zoom in or out on the program monitor, you can use this scroll wheel on your mouse. Now that our manual tracking is done, we can observe the result by moving the time indicator. The duplicate video of the train window now can be deleted. Just select the duplicate video layer and press the delete key on your keyboard. After doing this, you'll see the maxed video in the program monitor. Let's make some changes to it. First, select the video, then go to the effect controls panel. Here you'll see an option inverted. Check this box to invert the max. Instantly, you'll see the change on the program monitor where the inside of the max becomes dark, indicating transparency. Move the time indicator and if you notice that the masking edge is not perfect, you have a few options to improve it. You can adjust the max feather to soften the edge and use max expansion to fine tune the max boundary. After making these adjustments, move the time indicator to observe how the window max animation behaves. If you are satisfied with the masking, place the first video underneath the second video. Play the footage again to see Bantic's window transition. Now a minor change needs to be applied to the first video. Since the window of the train is zooming out, the first video in the transition, the train video should be also zoom out to match the window's movement. First make sure the time indicator is at the beginning of the transition. Select the first video, then go to the effect controls panel, add keyframes for position and scale by clicking on the respective stopwatch icons. Next move the time indicator to the frame where the window zoom out ends. 
and add another set of keyframes for position and scale by clicking on their little diamond icons. Then decrease the scale value to make the footage fit with the upper layers mask. If you see any black areas on the footage, adjust the X and Y position values accordingly. X adjusts the horizontal position and Y adjusts the vertical position. Now select the first two keyframes and set them to ease out. And then select the last two keyframes and set them to ease in to smooth out the animation. It's time to observe the animation, so first move the time indicator to review it. If you notice any black areas, click the right arrow icon to go to the last keyframes and slightly increase the scale value. You can also adjust the position if needed. Move the time indicator again to see the changes. It looks like everything is working well now. That's all for today's Bantik A window transition tutorial in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can check out other interesting tutorials on this channel. Hope to see you in the next video.